Hello, this is a little mini course in Swing on how to create this reaction time program. So if I press the spacebar now, it'll start timing and it'll time a random amount of time and then suddenly change to green. And the idea is I've got to press the spacebar or click as fast as possible when I see this green screen. And then it's gonna tell me how long I took to react. And if I click or press the spacebar again, I can go back to the start. Let's try that again. Okay, that was a bit better. So in this video and the next four videos after, I'm gonna show you how you can make this application in Java Swing. All you need is basic Java knowledge for this. So you need to be able to write basic Java programs. And if you can do that, Swing is already built into Java. And I'm gonna show you how to write this little application. And we're gonna take a look at the idea of a controller. We're gonna look at using a timer at intercepting uh, keyboard and mouse clicks and various other things like that. We're also gonna take a bit of a look at grid bag layout, the most flexible, um, but also most difficult layout manager that lays out your components. And we're gonna take a look at card layout. So that's all in these five videos in this little course. So in this video now, we're going to create a basic swing project. We're just going to put a window on the screen, literally. And I'm in Eclipse here. You can use whatever Java IDE you prefer. Let's go to File, New Java Project. And I am assuming that you already know Java here to some extent. And I'm gonna call it Reaction Times. Now you notice that by default here, it's going to create a modulinfo.java file. It's actually easiest just to untick that most of the time, unless you really need the module features. But I'm going to leave it ticked because this is definitely going to catch you out at some point if you are using Eclipse. Let's click Finish. And now I'm going to right click and go to New Class. And we're going to create a class called App. Let's put it in a package. I just need to call the package something. I'll call it JWP because that's my initials. You can call it what you want. And I'll tick to say that I want a public static void main. And now what we want from here, so we should already be able to run this. And what I want is a class that represents a window that we can trigger from here. So let's right click the package and go to new class. And I'll call this main frame. This is gonna represent our main window. And we'll click finish. And we'll say that this extends J frame. So I'll try to add the import for J frame. And we'll save that. And we can see that we've still got errors here. It says the type Java X or Java X dot swing dot J frame is not accessible. Now this is just a problem with modules. So if you've got a module info Java in your project, you need to go to that. And it should look something like this, module and the name of the module, open and close curly brackets. You just need to put in there, requires java.desktop, and then you can access the swing uh, module. So if we save that, then the error goes away. We've got a warning here. This won't stop your program from running, but let's just click it and go to add default serial version ID it won't actually make any difference to anything. The reason that error is there is because one of these classes, either JFrame or something that it extends, implements the serializable interface, which makes it possible to save JFrames to a file, but we're not gonna make use of that anyway. And if you implement that interface, you should have a serial version UID, but here it will make no difference to us. Let's just save everything, we shouldn't get any errors. And we'll right click and go to source and generate constructor using fields. Click generate. So we don't need this call to super. The J frame class is, is just the basic swing class. It's built into Java, at least in 2024. And it's just used for putting your, your window on the screen, the main window of your application. Usually you'll only have one J frame in, an app, in one application. Now we need to do a few things to actually get this to work. 
One thing is I need to create one of these main frames in my main method here. Now what we could do is we could just say new main frame and that probably would work. Let's see what actually happens if we try to run this now though and we'll see that there are some problems. So if I run it, well I actually have got um, an icon down at the bottom here off the recording area and the program's running but you can't see anything. There's no window so you can tell it's not working. Let's just quit that. One thing that we need to do is run the program in a in the recommended way because uh, Swing has its own sort of event thread where it checks for user interaction and so on and updates the windows and we need to make sure that we're running in one of those threads and to do that we just use Swing Utilities. Let's do Control Spacebar to get the autocomplete. Swing Utilities Invoke Later and in there we can pass a method reference to the constructor of the mainframe class that we've created. So mainframe colon colon new. And this will run the constructor of the mainframe. So it will create an object from this mainframe class. And then we get rid of this new mainframe because we don't want that. So this is the recommended way to run a swing program. And you can also put a Lambda expression in there if, if you know what those are and run stuff that way. Now we still have the problem that if we run it, we're not going to see anything on the screen. It is going to run probably, but we won't see anything. And now it's actually quit by itself. So let's go to mainframe here. And the first thing that we need to do is say set visible because otherwise by default, we get an invisible window, which is clearly no use. So I want to say set visible true. And if we run that, we get a window that is visible, but it is tiny and not any use. We can actually expand it, but um, clearly that's not much use either. And if we click the cross in the corner, well, the window is closed, but you can see the application still running. I've got this red button here, uh, which is used for sort of forcibly quitting the program. Let's click that red button and forcibly quit it. Um, so we need to take care of both of those things. So one thing is we can do set size or you could just arrange to have the window maximized when it runs. Let's set it to maybe 600 by 600. You can set it to whatever size you want. I'm just going to make a square window here for this application. And now, okay, so we get a window on the screen, but if I get rid of the window, it doesn't actually close the application. I have to do that forcibly with this red button. So to get around that, I need to say set default close operation. Let's use autocomplete here. Okay, and I need a constant from the JFrame class, which is exit on close. So this is saying when the window is closed, exit the application. And now if I run it, so we've got a window there and I click uh, the cross or whatever you have in the corner here, depending on your operating system and the application will also quit. So that's a really basic swing program. And we're gonna, in the next videos, start adding stuff into that window. Now, if you want a more structured introduction to swing that starts from the absolute basics, uh, assuming that you know some Java already, if you go to caveofprogramming.com and just go to view all products here, I've got this course, Java Swing Programming from Beginner to Expert, uh, which you can actually, if you click on it, you can actually see the first videos from it absolutely for free. So do check that out. And next time we're going to add stuff actually into our window to make it a bit more interesting.